Welcome to the Thursday, September 10th, 2020 meeting of the Northampton School Committee. I'm Mayor David Narkowitz, uh, the chair of the school committee. Um, this meeting is being held as a online Zoom meeting yeah. pursuant to Governor Baker's emergency order modifying the state's open meeting law issued March 12th, 2020. Um, we have folks that are here by uh, both the computer as well as telephone. We do ask you to please mute yourself um, uh, during the meeting. And, um, and not yet. Oh, there we go. Um, so again, oh, we have right themselves. Um, so the first order of business will be uh, the roll call and I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Mayor Narquist. Present. Mayor, Mayor, Member Busanski. Present. Member Fallon. Present. Member Serafikov. Present. Member Condon. Present. Member Levy. Present. We oh, close with chains are hard in Never. Uh, I think we're being bombed. I think we're being bombed. Put them in the waiting room. I've removed I just, them. I just removed them. Yeah, we both Thank removed you. them. They've been removed. All right. Member Kaufman. Present. Member Goldman. Present. Member Voss. Present. And Member Gold. Present. Your Honor, you have a quorum. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and um, so this evening we have a very full agenda, um, but we also have a very time sensitive um, um, collective bargaining related matter uh, that's very time sensitive to uh, the beginning of school next week. And so we had an executive um, session scheduled uh, on this agenda, um, and we are going to actually take it up first um, uh, because of timing issues. So um, I am going to ask the clerk, or rather ask a member to make a motion uh, to move into executive session. We will come back to open session um, and, uh, and pick up the meeting. Um, Mr. But, Mr. Mayor, if I could interrupt. Yes. I just want to make sure Principal Choquette is here. Beth, can you make yourself known so I can make you? I am here. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm remove this person. And where are you again, Beth? Right here. Hello. Oh, great. I'm going to make you host for this. Okay. And uh, you can return it to me when uh, you come back from the second. Thank you. Okay, so I would entertain a motion then to move into the executive session right now, please. Request to enter executive session under Massachusetts General Law Open Meeting Chapter 30A, Section 20A, 21A2 and A3 to discuss strategy and preparation for a collective bargaining and to conduct collective bargaining if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. Um, seconded by, looks like Member Voss. Um, I'll now ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Can I ask really quickly before we do the roll call, is it is it typical that we do um, that we do our executive session before public comment or? After? In this case, yes, it is. Yeah. Thanks. Member Busanski? Yes. Member Fallon? Yes. Member Serafikov? Yes. Member Condon? Yes. Member Levy? Yes. Member Kaufman? Yes. Yes. Member Goldman? Yes. Member Voss? Yes. yes. Member Gold? And Mayor Narquist? Yes. The vote is unanimous. Okay, so. Um, the school committee will now be moving to an executive session. Um, so this meeting. Will be 
Very hard to get rid of. All it says is pin video. Can I get the yeah. host and I can do it? There's many of them in the waiting room. Beth, Beth, please say Emily host and see if she can get rid of it. Follow Fungo, follow Fungo. Okay, we've removed, I think I've removed all six of the uh, <laughs> offending parties. Um, <laughs> But unfortunately, when you start to see I feel you, man. So there are many of them in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. ah. And there's also um, people's names who I recognize in the waiting yeah. room. Me too. It's just hard to know who's who's who. Yeah, okay. Um, so, um, so we're gonna go into executive session now and then we can sort out the waiting room when we come back. Hello. Um, from executive session. So um, school committee members will now leave this Zoom meeting to the, um, and go to the executive session. From executive session, and so we will um, resume the meeting where we um, began. And um, I uh, appreciate the public's indulgence and the time that we've taken to be in executive session. But we had critical matters relative to collective bargaining um, and critical to the start of school next week. Um, so the um, first item on our agenda is a public comment period. Um, if there are folks who uh, wish to speak in the public comment, if you could raise your hands, use the raise hand function. Um, if you're not on, um, on a computer, uh, you would use star nine for that. And, um, and I will recognize you and ask you to unmute. And if you could just state your name and address and provide a public comment. Um, we'd like you to limit it to three minutes or less. Um, and obviously, um, if you've already uh, sent us a letter of some kind, uh, you know, if you could summarize since we've already received the letter, that would be helpful as well. Um, so I will begin by uh, beginning with Anthony Peck. And if you could, um, you'd be the first person. Thank you. Hi, my name is Anthony Peck, uh, 9 Laurel Street, Northampton. Um, I have one kid at Northampton High who competes on the school's cross-country team. Um, I'm also a professor of sociology at UMass, and I have research expertise on social isolation and adolescent well-being. And I just wanted to summarize some of the research on this matter, which is that the systematic research is indicating that there are likely increases in loneliness and depression among adolescents. Uh, likely due to the pandemics and for social isolation, and that sports participation participation is a known protective factor against depression and suicidal risk, and that the transmission likelihood of COVID-19 is low outdoors, particularly when physical distancing is maintained. Um, recently, in a press conference with the governor of Connecticut, Dr. Fauci was supportive of having low-risk fall sports go forward in areas with low COVID-19 incidence. Um, currently, our positivity rate in Northampton is 0.17% for the last 14 days. Uh, it's worth also noting that the UMass positivity rate, which includes a lot of employees, uh, staff, and faculty members, uh, is just 0.03%. So that's three in 10,000 um, uh, positive cases. Um, so based on that, the MIAA modifications for cross-country are designed to mitigate the risks of COVID-19 transmission. These modifications include the required use of face masks before and after running, allowing dual meets only. Uh, in varsity races, this would usually mean just seven runners per team. Uh, the use of staggered starts, which would reduce the number of runners that will be in the same part of the course at the same time. 
And lastly, the fact that physical distancing is largely feasible given that courses are fairly wide throughout. The, this is certainly the case in Dog Park, which is the home course for the NHS Blue Devils. So in short, I asked the school committee to approve cross country for competitions in alignment with MIAA guidance. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Peck. Um, the next person who uh, has their hand raised is uh, Marissa Hochstetter. Hi, good evening. I'm Marissa Hochstetter. I live on Washington Avenue. I have two fourth graders at Jackson Street School. Um, I will be brief because of the hour, obviously. I will just say before my comments that I'd prepared, um, I understand why you had to do what you just did, but I think the spirit of that is really against this community and asking people to wait five hours to make public comment at a time when there's almost no opportunity to make public comment um, is really disappointing. Um, so my comments are that school starts next week. And obviously I don't know what you all just decided, but um, there is zero definition on what you mean when you say remote learning. We have asked, and I addressed this committee, I think back in June, I've been asking our principal and the superintendent since April when we were essentially abandoned by our third grade teacher. Um, it is impossible to plan or schedule when we have no information. You say remote learning, we were directed to a sample plan in the um, what you submitted to Desi, but I don't know if that means that school starts. I don't know what that means. I don't know how to tell my employer when I need to take off work. I don't know how to um, I mean, it's even saying we need a Chromebook, a Chromebook for what? We have zero information. I am disappointed that this committee made a choice. Um, really, it seems based on fear, not specifics, and spent a lot of time attending to what um, the public health concerns were and zero about what actual teaching and learning would look like. And um, many parents have left the school system or made other choices because we simply don't have any information. One of the reasons we live here is because of our schools. And honestly, I'm sort of disappointed and embarrassed at the failure of leadership to make specific plans on actual teaching and learning. Um, we've known since the spring that any plan or any outcome that this committee would vote on would include either remote learning either in whole or in part, or the need to pivot to it. And I think we've lost the forest for the trees um, and left families with zero information um, and school starting supposedly in five days um, and, and really no definition of what that is. So I wanted to express my concern um, and disappointment and hope that um, when we talk about and use the term remote learning, we will spend some time um, giving definition to that. Um, I was also disappointed to learn that the while there is a sample schedule, the actual day will be at the discretion of each teacher. And after our experience last spring with um, twins, so kids in two different classes and completely different um, capabilities, uh, we were just really abandoned by one teacher. And so I think it's a mistake to leave that to the discretion of the teachers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The next person whose hand is raised is Kristen McHugh. Hi, I'm Kristen McHugh. I live in Williamsburg, but I'm a fourth grade teacher at Jackson Street School. And I will also try to keep this short. Um, I have spent a whole lot of hours at school committee and negotiating meetings um, and approximately 10 toddler bedtimes at school at negotiations meetings. and. I know some of you and I have worked with you in a variety of ways and I have a huge amount of respect for this school committee, but I also am um, frustrated for a lot of the reasons Marissa just said as a teacher who doesn't have answers for her colleagues who are asking me for answers because they know I'm on the negotiating team five days away from the start of school. Um, for parents who we do have plans, but we don't know if we can share those plans because we don't have MOA. And so, you know, I just, I have so much respect for all of you and I um, have 
have enjoyed the, you know, there are parts of the process of negotiating I've enjoyed, but this is getting to be to the point where it's unfair to your educators, to your families, to your, to the children of Northampton that we are at 1251 entering into public comment. Um, and we have no answers, you know, no definitive answers. I want to share a schedule with my parents that I have made. I want to tell them what the days are going to look like. And I have limited ways of doing that. So I just hope that we can resolve this before next <laughs> Wednesday. And I don't know how that's going to happen. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else who wishes to speak in public comment? I do. Hello. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. David's iPhone. Are you David's iPhone? Well, that's not my last time iPhone, but uh, I okay. wish it was. All right. Um, uh, I, you just yeah. identify yourself for your sure. name and address. Thank you. I will. Uh, I'm Dave Reinhardt. I'm the head coach for Boys Cross Country at Northampton High, and I live on Cardinal Way in Florence. Uh, and I'm just speaking on behalf to recommend to the board um, for a yes for fall sports. And if we follow the science and follow the data that's been compiled to date, I think this is a much easier decision than it would have been in the early phases of the virus back in March and April. Uh, we've all learned a lot about the virus. In fact, I've learned more about science in these last six months than I did in four years of high school and college. Um, so I think between the state education board, the MIAA, uh, given the green light for sports, um, I think and if the ways that we will mitigate uh, with safety, the practices with hand sanitizers, virus, uh, or rather masks, social distancing, I think we can do a good job and give these kids a chance to get their fall sports in. Um, they need it. We, we know there's science behind that too, in terms of how physical activity helps students. We're looking to, to compete. Uh, these boys, and I know all the athletes in all sports, have worked very hard this summer. They lost spring sports as it was. Um, they need that uh, in their life right now. So my request, my suggestion for the board is to vote yes and allow the individual families and the student athletes to opt out if they prefer not to do sports as opposed to the board just ceremoniously saying no to all the activities um, the facts are there. We know what's going on now and how to minimize things. And many schools in the region have already approved overwhelmingly to have fall sports. So I hope you will do the same. And uh, that's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else who wishes to offer public comment? Okay. Okay. Um, I would. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, could you Hi, please? Steph can you hear me? Stephanie? Yes. yes, I didn't see your hand up. I'm sorry, Stephanie. Oh, I'm sorry, am I out of turn? I'll wait then. No, no, you're fine. I, no one else had their hand up. Okay. So I, I was just uh, finding out if there was anyone else. But go ahead, Stephanie. Okay. State your name and address, please. My name is Stephanie Pasternak, and I live at 121 Pine Street. And I have a son who is a senior this year at Northampton High. And I am, I just wanted to. Uh, follow up and say that I would like to urge the school committee to vote to allow NHS sports teams to practice and compete in accordance with the recently approved MIAA rules. Um, and I especially want to advocate for cross country, but I do believe all the sports can be um, performed safely uh, following the MIAA guidelines. I think the MIAA has analyzed the COVID data and ways in which to provide safe protocols for the various sports for the benefit of schools to make these decisions. And I also want to follow up with the point made earlier that sports are, sports are very important to mental health um, to many of the students during this challenging time of remote learning. And this cannot be overestimated. Um, I think we should encourage other outdoor safe activities as well, such as there's probably is a way you could do, for example, the outdoor improv group. I think, I think we've seen the data shows that safe outdoors at a safe distance um, can, uh, the, the, with that, the virus will not spread as, as indicated with Northampton and the way we've done outdoor dining and the virus has not spread. And um, I think that's, that could also be applied to, to sports following the MIA COVID guidelines. 
Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, is there anyone else who wishes to offer public comment? Again, if you could um, uh, raise your hand or star, star nine if you're on a phone. Anyone else? I think everyone's unmuted so you can speak out. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Um, Member Seraphie Cox, you have your hand raised. Yes, um, I would uh, like to request that we move to um, talk about new business num uh, letter A, the vote to participate in fall sports, that we take that item next in our agenda. Okay, let's go ahead and take that up. Um, uh, it, without objection, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, so I believe we have... Uh, Can I just make a motion, Mr. Mayor? Can What's I that? Move to, could I just make a motion to participate in fall sports? So put a motion on the table. Yeah, okay. I'll second it. Okay, so there's been a motion made and seconded um, to participate in fall sports. Um, there is, do we want to, I don't know if uh, Lauren McFarland is with us and if we want to have an opportunity to hear from Lauren, who's waited, I think, to be here with us tonight. Um, yeah, I, I'm here, I can chat. Or okay, so our athletic director. Whatever. Yes. Um, I'll just say a quick thing. It's nice to see you all. Thank you for the hard work that you are doing and staying up into the wee hours of the morning multiple, multiple times. Community. Um, I hope you had the chance to read over the um, documents that I sent you talking about the rules, regulations, modifications, all the ways that we can safely implement sports. For, um, I'm really hoping this could be a redefining year for athletics where um, it's more about community than competition, skills over score, where we get to uh, uh, Okay. That's really the only comment like, outside of um, the, the documentation that I sent you already with all the rules and regulations. I'm here to answer any questions on those. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much. Um, are there questions from the school committee? Any questions or comments or... Um... Okay. So, um, oh, Member Kaufman, I'm sorry, Member Kaufman. No problem, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lauren. I actually never, didn't receive any information from you, but so we should probably check into that. But I will say that I did certainly access the MIAA modifications. Um, I'm probably, you know, I, I'd lean of, of the school committee members, I'm probably on the more cautious side. Um, but I will say I was really blown away with the modifications that MIAA put in place. I felt like they really met all of my concerns. Um, I really wanted to vote on this. I was looking for a reason to, and when I saw those modifications, I was, I, they went far beyond what I would have thought. So I'll certainly be voting for it. But I did want to ask you, do you, can you just explain in one minute or less, you know, what the approach is going to be in Northampton to ensure that all of our coaches are up to date on what the modifications are and how we're going to hold them um, and support them and be able to carry out what are some pretty significant changes? Yeah, definitely. Um, all of the fall coaches have already received the modifications. And so I have been speaking with them um, what, it, what it will look like in practices. So our soccer coach has do tryouts and bringing in different grade levels um, and smaller groups and just slowly waving them in to start building teams. Um, so they, the coaches have already been really proactive of learning the modifications. I think the next step is now going to be educating um, our caregiver and, and sh making sure that they're up to date with the standards also so that we are going across the board with understanding of that. Um, and then I think there's just going to have to be extreme communication between myself and the coaches um, on where practices are going to happen, where we're going to be meeting, where we're going to separate so that we can be in spaced out groups. Um, that's, that's the gist of it so far. But I think making sure that 
caregivers are up to date on what is happening. Thank you. And then on the last question of reinsurance, so is are, do you do you envision any any issues or any problems with us um, abiding by the modifications that MIA is recommending? Um, I think they're going to be a challenge. I don't. That I mean that uh, it, and I. So the mindset, um, especially for soccer, it's going to be really challenging um, for how many regulations and modifications that are set up for it. So I think it um, is just encouraging athletes to take that as um, a positive thing that they take instead of a negative thing that is really restricting them from it. Um, I think the one of the big things that was making me nervous was uh, spectators, but I just um, had a phone call with one of our representatives from the um, Western Mass League director. Um, and so the executive committee of Western Massachusetts has decided that no away teams um, can have spectators come to events. So I think just ensuring that we're in the right size for that um, is, is going to be another thing that we will have to, to monitor and really be aware of. And so once again, that's going to be communicating with caregivers in that regard. Thank you very much. And if, if, uh, if this does pass, I certainly um, think that we would all appreciate just an update. Um, I know that you're, you haven't probably worked on this that much yet because we haven't voted yet, but you sound like you have some good plans ahead. And if, we, if it does pass and we're successful in implementing sports. If you can give us an update or through Dr. Provost in the next two or three weeks, that would be much appreciated. Thank yeah. you again. Member Levy. Thanks, super fast. I also didn't receive any information. So I, I guess it's a question as to whether we need to have a friendly amendment that, that says um, we, would, we would move forward with fall sports under the MIAA guidance or new regulations or whether that's that's implied and not necessary to articulate. I received the information in an email from Annie Thompson on September 4th at 4.15 p.m. It's a document called school committee dash athletic participation dot pdf. Thank you. You're welcome. It's in the it was in the September 10th school committee uh, packet, so to speak, email that. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. just looking at. Anyway, sorry, I missed it. I don't know if we need a friend. I, I think it's implied that yeah. sports are only happening under the modified guidelines. Okay. Yeah, got it. Thanks. Okay, member Busansky. Thanks. I guess um, I just wanted to, well, just two questions. I just want to clarify it. It seems like in your, well, I mean, first of all, welcome to the district. Very exciting to have you. What a what a meeting to join us on. What a way, to, <laughs> what a welcoming committee we've been. Um, but uh, so it looks like I think if I'm reading this right, so fall starting September 18th would be golf, cross country, field hockey, soccer, gymnastics, girls volleyball, fall swimming and diving. So for us, it would only be um, yeah. boys and girls soccer, boys and girls cross country, uh, golf. Your Lauren, you are. may want to turn your video turn off your because, video. Uh, because you're you don't have enough bandwidth. You're freezing. Go Is try. Happy? Is this better? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, we would only offer boys and girls soccer, boys and girls cross country, golf, which is co-ed, and then girls field hockey. Okay, great. Thank you. And then looking at, I was just having a little trouble. Just and of course, I read this like I feel like I read this document a long time ago, but the. Um, I didn't see a place in that sort of breakdown of the different seasons um, uh, for ultimate Frisbee. Is that because it's not an MIAA sport? Correct. So ultimate Frisbee would still happen in the spring um, and it is currently in the red. Um, so football, why that's not being offered right now, it's because it's in the red zone for um, high level contact sport. So. My hope is that, which football is now slated to be in a fall two, which would start in late February, um, yeah. which also bodes question of if our fields will be ready in time for that. Um, but we're gonna 
we're going to attack that battle when it comes, um, that we will have a, a better grasp on COVID in the springtime um, and that ultimate Frisbee would be ready to go. But yes, because it's not an MIA sport, it wasn't listed in that, but it's good to go. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks so much. Member Fallon. I just, I, uh, very quickly for those members who didn't receive the documentation, I was, I was a little bit concerned only about soccer and I'm so impressed with the modifications. There are no throw-ins in soccer. Uh, you can't even use a traditional whistle. If you're a ref, you have to use electric whistles or um, air horns. Um, if you even get within six feet of an official, you get a red card. I mean, it is the, the modifications that they have made, I feel beyond comfortable with. And I think that this is so important for our student athletes to have this opportunity. Um, and there are rec programs running for the elementary and middle school students already. I think that this is the only opportunity our high school students will have for some sort of physical outlet. So I am absolutely in favor of it. Um, Cammy, your so, hand is raised. So I just wanted to clarify with Lauren, if she could for the committee, um, are there gonna be games or um, so I'm assuming that we're going to be traveling to other communities. Correct. The so okay. the um, currently the PVIC is creating bubbles, so regional bubbles of where our competition will be. So um, one of the other MIAA regulations is that there is no longer uh, postseason Western Mass tournaments for the fall. So kind of the standings of where you're ranked against other teams is um, not necessarily essential. It's really just about getting the student athletes out and playing. So we, um, the in air quotes bubbles are being created right now. We're still waiting on a few schools um, to continue to finalize their votes for athletics, but it's been um, really positive. I think there's only about four schools that have said no out of the 50 in Western Mass. Um, so we would be playing um, within 20 to 30 minutes and maybe um, five to eight games in a season. So much smaller scale, much less transportation. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so that's, that's the one thing I just wanted to bring up for um, the committee and the public for whoever's listening. Um, it, just to, Tammy's gonna need to work closely with Lauren because of the busing requirements because right now we're remote. So we don't have our regular buses running during the course of the day is what we've told our contractor um, for school right now. So we would need to make a decision about what we're gonna do about the athletic portion mm -hmm. of that contract. Um, and then we do have a restriction currently running that we can put no more than, I believe it's 12 students on a 77 passenger bus right now. I thought, I thought from, is that in the district or is that from, um, That's the state. I thought it was 22. No. Okay. No. Um, cause we can only go every other alternating seat. Um, and, and I'm, as I'm saying that, I'm just trying to remember all the numbers, the numbers are going through my head tonight. Um, we can check on the numbers, but I know it's it, it's it's, it's very yeah. minimal. It's smaller, yeah. I mean, it's I think it's maybe twenty five to thirty percent of bus capacity, so it's pretty small. So that it could be looking. Small. It could so, be looking at only varsity team traveling and having a JV as a developmental squad that is just practicing. Um, so I really just wanted to make the committee aware and the public aware that that's, that's going to be a new challenge for us this fall, in addition to many other things right now, is going to be the transporting the students to those games, and how do we accommodate that when a bus company really isn't running right now for us to run regular remote, since we're in remote mode. Um, so we'll, we'll need to work on that and figure that piece out as well. Um, Superintendent Provost. 
Hi, thank you. Um, and welcome, Lauren, to your first um, version of, of the school committee. Uh, I wanted to go back to something you said earlier and give you a chance to correct yourself or give you a chance to correct me if I'm misinformed. You said that um, field hockey was a girl's sport, but I believe that's actually co-ed. Can you just speak to that? Uh, yes. Sorry, excuse me. It is it is co-ed. Um, currently, we do not have any boys on the team. So Thank that's you. my mistake. Thank you. Member Fallon. Can you just clarify for me, are, if if parents choose to let their student participate, um, and but they don't feel comfortable with their student um, on a bus, are they they're allowed to, to drive them to and from competitions practices, correct? There are forms on our district website that would have to be filled out. There are certain insurance requirements that would have to be done and filed with me um, beforehand. So I think that is something that we could discuss as being um, a potential uh, for transportation. Um, it's just one extra step, but I think people are willing to make that one extra step if it makes them feel more comfortable instead of putting their students on a bus. Um, I will gladly take all paperwork and insurances to, to back these students up so that they can go compete. Okay, any other, um, any other folks have any questions or discussion about this uh, motion that's on the floor? Okay, so the, again, the motion is a vote to participate in fall sports. And I will ask the clerk to call the roll of the school committee. Member Levy. Yes. Member Kaufman. Yes. Member Goldman. Yes. Member Voss. Yes. Uh, Member Gold. Yes. Mayor Narquitz. Yes. Member Busansky. Yes. Member Fallon. Yes. Member Serafi Cox. Yes. And Member Condon. Yes. The vote passes unanimously. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Ms. McFarland, for being with us tonight and um, and for the work you'll be doing to get our sports program up and running in the fall. Um, Member Levy, you have your hand up. Thank you. I know this is a challenge because there are folks who have been waiting to hear and participate in some of our agenda items, um, but I would like to make a motion that we push the rest of our agenda items to our next scheduled meeting, which I think is Monday. Um, um. I, I think there were a number of people who wanted to, to make comments on some of those agenda items and also be able to, to witness our deliberation. And I think it's unfair to the public to, to not be able to hold those conversations at a time when they could be a part of it. I also think that we do not have the bandwidth to really be all that thoughtful. So unless I'm super open to folks saying there's, if there's something that has to happen right now, um, but I wanna put that motion on the floor. Well, that motion would require a second. Um, so there would require, is there a second on the motion? Second. Okay, so there's a second. Um, so in looking at the agenda, so I want to confirm because it, uh, perhaps Annie can confirm. Um, do we have a meeting that was posted for Monday? Yes. We, we have a negotiating meeting that was posted for Monday and there was one that I sent in an email to post for Tuesday for the school committee, but it looks like on the city website, they posted both for Monday. Okay. Um, so I don't, I don't really know what takes precedence. My email with the correct language to post it for the 15th or the fact that they posted it on the website. Well, what is the agenda? What does the actual agenda say? What does the actual notice say? Is it dated Tuesday? It's dated Tuesday, yeah. And she just, so she put it in the wrong date she put uh, it in the on wrong the date. electronic calendar. So it's hanging on the bulletin board as Tuesday, not Monday. Right. Um, because we had a, 
so it's yeah it's it's so i i think the problem is the actual meeting posting says if you open it it says it's tuesday um because that's what we were we were trying to piggyback with a potential uh negotiating meeting on monday and then have a meeting on tuesday and so i apologize it actually yeah. says it says tuesday but it says the 14th on the agenda i apologize so it's a little bit of both okay but i did put in the in the email this is for the 15th okay but but what's written on the agenda it says tuesday the 14th which is wrong it's tuesday the 15th okay wow member gold can we take advantage of this fortuitous glitch and have this on monday please that well it's, it's, a, it's a, not a great glitch because we now um well i guess we'd be able to post a meeting on tomorrow in time for tuesday right i can only revise for tuesday yeah um okay well i, I guess that's uh fine um again i i i'm feeling very uh, uh, concerned that we had people waiting here um, for the meeting to take place. And so now we're, we're, we've had them waiting and now we're leaving. So um, member Seraphie Cox. Um, I wanted to draw attention to our rules of procedure, which say that um, if, if a meeting is recessed, it must convene with, be reconvened within a week. And so, I'm wondering if instead of ending the meeting, we put the meeting in recess. Yeah, but I don't think our I don't think I don't think our internal rules of recess can override the open meeting law. I mean, we'd still have to post the meeting. So we can come up with all kinds of rules we want, but it can't, it can't, you can't just magically unrecess on a day of the week. Um, okay. and say, oh, we have rules that say we can do that. It has to be a posted meeting under the open meeting law. So, but I mean, we've got the Monday, I think, although the Monday is a little bit of a, you know, I think there's a little bit of a problem, a defect in the posting because it's yes. it says one date and a different day. Um, so I don't know how the, that, that they would rule on that. Um, so, well, I mean, anyway, th there's been a motion made and seconded. So other folks want to discuss. I, yeah, member boss. Um, well, quickly, I would guess what's been posted might only be executive session, so I'm not sure if that's okay or not. And um, I'm not sure. Oh, maybe there is an open thing. But um, it, my understanding of recess is if we took a recess, it, I agree with member Levy, and um, I'm also very sorry that people, we have really important stuff to talk about. So is why can't we just say we're recessing until sometime in the very near future it's posted the meetings posted the agenda's there we're taking a recess for 18 hours or something when you say 18 hours i'm not sure what you mean i think she's the, suggesting we meet later on on friday like today well, in theory as a proposal i mean we beer. could meet at six o'clock on Friday. We could recess until another time, but well, I, I will say I cannot stay because it's. I've been up all week at stuff like this, so I'll just say that to public. I'm very sorry, but I have to work early and I can't stay much later. I want to be part of it, but I can't. Okay, so you're saying we recess the meeting and then reconvene <laughs> on this day, on Friday. Yeah, well, I'm putting that out as a brainstorm, as a possibility. I don't know. I'm, I'm just like member Levy, yeah. add to the brainstorm. But at one, okay. we have a big discussion. It's not like it's a five minute discussion, yeah. I don't think. Well, I, I think the concern is we have, um, you know, we're, we're spending a lot of time discussing this instead of we could be taking up other matters. So member Goldman. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's, I think the only circumstances according to our um, rules of procedure would be if a uh, emergency meeting. Yeah. I think you're frozen. If there's any reason for some of these issues that need to be happening today on Friday instead of next week. 
Yeah, we wouldn't qualify as an emergency under open meeting law. I mean, because the fact is we knew about them. They're posted on our agenda. So it's not like it, it has to really be something that's really like a massive snowstorm and we have to take some kind of an action. It can't really be um, an emergency because we we talked too long and the meeting went too late. Um, so that just isn't going to that won't work for the open meeting law. Um, uh, Member Gold. Um, I just uh, first, of course, I think I know people wanted to hear the code of conduct that uh, Principal Chiquette was going to do. I know people wanted to hear from um, the director, uh, Ms. McLeod, from the Y. So I think we owe that to the community to give them the chance to hear those. I, I feel so horrible that they waited. Um, I do want to just know: Can we even have this on Monday? Or it can? Is there a quorum of school committee members? Like, if we did postpone to Monday, can people put some thumbs up to see if we can get six? Well, is Monday oh. happen or is it Tuesday? Tuesday. We're postponing to tu Tuesday. We can't take advantage of the Monday thing. Doesn't okay. sound. I mean. Okay. Monday is negotiating meeting and I, I I really don't know. I would need some guidance on whether you could put these agenda items onto a negotiating subcommittee agenda. I don't think it's already posted though. It's already been posted and we've already the 48 hours is already told. So you right. can't add stuff to it now. Like you can't the I mean the the glitch of the Mondays. It's saying Tuesday and the fourteenth versus Monday the No, I would just have to uh the the, the one, one of the clerks uh one of the people in the clerk's office uh told me to hurry up and post for anything next week because she is off tomorrow. So that's why I did that hurriedly and I made that mistake. But I, I do have time to fix that tomorrow. Yeah, that will be fixed tomorrow. Right. And right. that's awful to do for Tuesday. Right. We, and there, it's yeah. within time. Okay, yeah. so Tuesday then? I mean, do we have a quorum for Tuesday? And then, and I guess I want to ask uh, Dr. Provost, does now moving it to Tuesday mess the district up? It doesn't mess the district up, but I do have to say, as you said, I, I feel so sorry for Beth, seeing her waiting almost seven hours now to give a five minute presentation. Um, and also, oh. If it's five minutes. I, I assumed there was going to be longer than five minutes. I'm sorry. If it was five minutes, then let's do that. No, it's basically well, we're being asked to work work. in the why. Like, I, I think I, I feel bad for them too, and I want to be able to honor and respect what they're presenting and be able to actually hear it. Yeah. Um. So. Okay. So, um, Member Kaufman. Thank you. Um, yeah, I do see um, apologies to Beth and apologies to the three representatives from the Y. Um, it's just a crazy time. I, I don't. I don't think either one is a fast discussion. I don't think we're going to do any justice by having us rush through this. Um, what I will ask, though, um, particularly for our friends from the Y, is that we actually have had a lot of discussion about this possibility. It. It. it it, it has blended into some other topics that we've discussed. And if it's okay with you, Dr. Provost, I would just encourage you to maybe have a conversation with our representative from with the representatives from the Y and maybe just bring them up to date on the kind of questions and the kind of things that we're now considering. So they'll be prepared to respond to questions and maybe they'll be prepared to um, move forward with some of the uh, concerns that we've brought up to uh, manage that a little bit better. So again, apologies, but know that we have been discussing it. We just haven't been able to discuss with you. I don't think we're gonna be able to do that tonight, but um, would you feel okay with that, Dr. Provost? Happy to do it. Allison, Kenzie, Kim, I'll give you a call later today. Today, yeah. Hey, thank you. Okay, um, Cami, is there a budgetary transfer that needs to be done? No, there's no need to do that. Student needs have changed. Okay. All right. So um, I'm not sure what the motion was. I think the question was, could we, the mo it would be basically a motion to postpone the remaining items on the agenda to our next posted meeting. Would somebody accept that as the amendment to what they, I think, I think Ronnie, you may have said Monday, but I think we want to just say to our next uh, lawfully posted meeting. Next um, to our next lawfully posted meeting. So we yes. can, clarify that um is there and i forgot who the seconder was on that 
That was me. It was Rebecca. Okay, Rebecca. Okay. Any other discussion on this? Okay, I'll ask for the roll call vote. Member Kaufman? Yes. Member Goldman? Yes. Member Voss? Yes. Member Gold? Yes. Mayor Narquist? No. Member Busansky? Yes. Member Fallon? Yes. Member Serafie Cox? Yes. Member Condon? Yes. Member Levy? Yes. The vote is nine in favor, one against. Okay, so the um, so the remainder of the meeting has been uh, postponed to our next uh, regular meeting, and so I'll declare the meeting adjourned. So the meeting of the school committee Thursday, September 10th is hereby adjourned on September.